Hey guys, welcome back to my project truck, my 1971 Ford F100. Uh, it's a cold and rainy day. Well, not really cold, kind of muggy and rainy day. And uh, I figure today's a good day to do a little extra work on the truck. Uh, I've been meaning to kind of get it up and give it an inspection. I've been driving it a lot. I probably put about 3,000 miles on it now since I did the suspension and all that and the short box. And I mean, it's been, it was a pretty extensive job this winter. So probably a good idea to give it a look over, make sure all my bolts are tight, none of the welds have cracked, all that. And uh, the other thing I'm going to do is, if you guys know anything about doing a Crown Vic swap on these trucks, there's a uh, rear control mount that you have to weld up a bracket for, build your own, whatever you want to call it. And then uh, that secures the, the lower control arm on the rear. Well, on the Crown Vic, it sits on an angle, the mount, and in this truck it sits flat. So I'm actually going to pull the bushing out of the mount and I'm going to rotate it inside the mount and then weld the mount back up. So that should give me uh, the camber adjustment I need because right now I'm still about a degree out from where I want to be on the front end and uh, so it tends to kind of follow the ruts and everything else and going on the forums the guys that are running the Marauders or uh, you know even just hot rotted Crown Vicks have uh, kind of put the specs out there of what works best and apparently what works best on these things is about a zero degree camber I'll probably go in a little bit from there but uh, that's not enough adjustment as it is so I have to modify it just like everything else in the truck so no big deal and let's get started on that now okay guys if you look right here this is the uh, plate I made up to weld to the frame to hold the lower control arm and this is the bushing that I want out so I'm just gonna take it off the control arm drop this metal bracket and uh, then I'm going to put a cut in here to pull the bushing out. So I'm just going to take this apart now. Alright here now you can kind of see why I want to do this. Uh, that's the limited slot of adjustment you have for caster and camber on these trucks when you do the Crown Vic swap. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to make it so it sits flat. That way I can adjust my camber no problem because right now there's not enough adjustment left in it. There it is, I got it out. So you can see how it's a, it's kind of a slot there and it runs kind of down at a 45 degree angle. So I want that slot to run sideways and as low in the mount as I can. So I'm gonna take and open that up and twist it in there hopefully. We'll see how that goes. If not, I'm going to be buying a new one of these. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just take and take my cutoff wheel here and I'm just going to put a cut right down the top and hopefully not cut into the rubber too badly. But if I cut it just straight across here, it should pop this thing loose enough that hopefully I can maybe put a screwdriver in there to open it up, but then I'll be able to get this bushing out and turn it. <laughs> I just had to cut just a little bit more. Uh, it was still hanging up a little bit, but now I can drive this thing out. Okay, let's see if I can twist this guy around. Oh. Oh, we're gonna need to do like that. A little bit looser. Oh, we'll just take it right out. This is not making me happy. Good welding table here. big deal. Yes, that comes out pretty easy. So what I'd like to know is if it sits if it sits one way more up and down because what I'd like out of this truck is a little bit more caster. So whichever way mounts the lower controller and lower if there is any difference in this I'm going to put it that way and I'm also going to mount it so I get it slot towards the inside as much as possible. So think about this for a second. This was in this way. This is in this way, so I gotta drive it in like that. Straight sideways. Should be no big deal. But that's what I always say, and things turn into a big deal. this up a little bit so I can weld it. It's actually metal on the inside so I'm not too worried about burning the rubber or anything. 
And uh, this is one of those jobs that I've been waiting forever, pardon me, waiting forever to do it. And when you finally get around to doing it, you're like, oh, that was easy. Should have done that like a year ago. But whatever, it's getting done. There's been lots of little jobs to do on this thing, so I don't feel too bad about that. Okay, I'm just gonna clean this up so it's ready to weld. $12 welding table that the news three years. My welding table, I mean heavy sarcasm because it's built of plastic. Alright, that should burn in pretty nice right there. Time to get the welder and maybe we should find ourselves a place to clean this up so we can get it ground lead on there as well. I really want this guy to stick, you know, safety and all. Alright, perfect. Let me get the welder. Alright, now I'm happy with that. That looks really nice. I gotta say, uh, I bought this Hobart, uh, what is it, 210 MVP, which is a multi-pass, uh, multi-voltage welder, and uh, got it wired up with 220 in the garage here, 230, and I couldn't be happier with the thing. It works awesome. So, the only thing holding me back at times is my skill, but that's getting better all the time, and uh, I'm gonna shoot a little paint on this so it doesn't rot out, and uh, we'll be good to go. Put her back in and go to the other side, do the other side. I'm going to leave this clamp on it right now until it cools down, just because, uh, I don't know, it seems like a good idea. But uh, I don't foresee having any problems now with this setup. Okay, so we got our brackets. Uh, I just shot a little bit of paint on this side of it just to clean up the bare metal. And uh, I'm going to bolt this guy back in. Right about in there. So let's see how this works. Because I was having some trouble with getting enough caster out of this side when I had it on the alignment rack. So I'm gonna fight with this a little bit. I think I'm gonna put a ratchet strap on it and pull on it and get it back in line. Okay guys, I got that all back together. I didn't bother filming it because just sometimes you have those days where just nothing lines up right and uh, everything is 10 times as hard as it should be. Uh, that's what was going on here, but no big deal. I got it all bolted back together and now we are going to move on to what everybody's been waiting for and what I get the most comments and emails about and everything else, and that's the brakes. It is time for the big brake kit. And uh, as you can see, I've actually got one already put together and it is massive. Like it fills the whole wheel. In fact, I had to grind the caliper just to get the uh, wheel to sit flush. So you can see there, like it is stupid tight. But uh, check it out here. This is the difference in the rotors. This is the uh, old and crappy Crown Vic rotor, and this is a GT500 rotor. And the difference is amazing. Look at this. You overlay them, there's a good inch of disc on either side. It's just mind boggling how much bigger these things are. And uh, the other thing that I was surprised about is how much lighter the Corvette caliper, caliper is compared to the Crown Vic. Like, just night and day difference in, in weight. And it's a dual piston where, uh, I guess this one is too, isn't it? Yeah, well the Crown Vic one is too. But uh, either way, we're moving on to a Corvette caliper and GT500 rotors and a bracket that uh, makes that all work. Spaces the rotor, or the uh, caliper up and away from the rotor so it'll clear. So I got these brackets from a guy on Facebook. He made it as a little kit and they work perfect. Like that was the easiest part of the whole thing. But uh, I don't remember the guy's name. I'm gonna look it up and I will try to put the link in the description. So everybody's gonna ask me over and over again anyways, but uh, the link's gonna go up and you guys can figure it out from there. I don't remember the guy's name, but somebody messaged me on YouTube and told me or commented on one of my videos and told me where to get the brackets. I bought them over a year ago. I can't remember the guy. I went back through my Facebook messages and uh, I don't know, the guy dropped off the face of the earth. Maybe this is the same guy building brackets that uh, 
some one of the Marauder forms, and maybe it's not, but I like mine, they work good. Hopefully you can get your hands on a set too, but uh, now it's time to show you how this all goes together. All right, okay guys, I'm gonna try this a little different way, and I'm gonna uh, hold the camera here instead of normal, but first thing we gotta do is we gotta take the wheel off. And I don't wanna hear it about using an impact on a wheel and blah, 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 because I'm just taking the wheel off. Wheels off, you gotta look at those Crown Victoria brakes. I mean, far superior to the 1974, or 71, sorry, F100 brakes, but uh, not nearly as cool as what we're gonna have on the go here pretty soon. So now I'm just gonna take the caliper back off and get the rotor off and I'll show you where we go from there. All right, so what we're gonna do here now is just take the caliper off and take the bracket with it. And uh, I'm just gonna put my impact in here and pop these bolts out. Get out of the way. Okay, and then the next step I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab a little vice grip, pinch off that brake line, and uh, take that bolt out of the caliper too. I should have done that first, or out of the brake line. That would have been the smart thing to do, but uh, I didn't. So we'll get the tools and do that now. So we got our baby vice grips. I don't remember what that was for, but I'm gonna take it with me. And a drain pan. Just to catch any brake fluid that comes out. Okay, I'm just gonna pinch this line just so it doesn't leak too badly. There's a rubber line so I can get away with that. Take the bolt out of the caliper, or out of the brake line. <laughs> And then I'll take this heavy piece of crap caliper off. Uh, I shouldn't say piece of crap. They worked good for what I used it for, but uh, we're going above and beyond now. And surprisingly, I figured out a way to use the factory brake lines with the Corvette caliper. So I'll show you how that works in a minute. But first, I gotta drill the brake fluid all over the place. And I'm just gonna throw this right outside. because I'm never gonna use that again. And the brake rotor, look at that, completely missed. My drip pan. Brake rotor can come over here. It's a paper towel. brake fluid that'll be there forever and ever all right moving on now the GT 500 rotor is almost a direct bolt-on when I say almost it's because in the center the hub bore is like a couple thousands too small to slip right onto the crown Vic front end but that's easy to fix we're just gonna take a air die grinder and just open it up a little bit only took me a minute on the other side oh my safety gogs on See if that's enough. I hope so because I hate the sound of my air compressor and it runs all the time. Husky air compressor, not so impressive. Don't buy one because it is stupid loud and it takes forever to recover. Yeah, almost. So you can feel it's just rocking just a little bit here. It's not quite there, but pretty close. A little more grinding and we'll have her. Okay, so one important thing when you're doing any brake job on any car is to come in here and just, I use this little wire brush and uh, clean all the corrosion and crap off the hub surface because you don't want your rotor to not seat and sit flat. And then it uh, 
you torque it down too soon when you got it rough like that behind it, it can actually rope your or warp your rotor. So we just want to make sure we get this good and clean. And we're going to try our GT500 rotor again. Now, <laughs> even if I get it a little bit off with the die grinder getting this opened up, I mean, it doesn't really matter because <laughs> these studs all fit perfectly tight in the holes. They're the same bore from what I can see. And uh, I think it'll center up no problem. Plus, you know, it'd be pretty hard to get it that far out that it would matter. All right. Let's see. All right, looks like we're not quite opened up enough yet on this center flange. So I'm going to go back to my die grinder and open that up a little bit more. All right, let's try that again. There we go. That's all the way on now. And I'm just going to throw a couple nuts, some factory lug nuts, on it just to keep the rotor in place while we're messing around with the caliper bracket and all that good stuff. All right, now, now that I can see that it fits flush, I just remembered I have to take the rotor back off because, you know, I like to do everything five times in order to bolt the bracket on because the bolts on the bracket actually go through the opposite way now. Okay, I just kind of put the bracket up here loosely uh, just to show you guys what I run into on both sides, but that's the, that the bracket doesn't quite clear here and here, so you got to take your... Uh, grinder and just knock this down a bit in order to make some clearance for that bracket to slide over. So I'm going to grab my grinder now and do that. And I think I'm going to hit this with the flap, flap wheel on the four and a half inch angle grinder. That works pretty good. Okay, I got my flap wheel. I think this one's 40 grit on my grinder. And I'm just going to go ahead and try to knock that uh, down. Yeah, and that's aluminum, so it takes like no time at all. All right, let's see if we uh, we line up now. Okay, now that we got all the material ground away to make room for the bracket, I'm just gonna bolt this guy on using the factory Crown Vic hardware. Lines up nice. Okay. There we go. Torque the spec. All right. Now, in order to make this work with the Crown Vic brake lines, there's two modifications you have to do. Uh, one is on the caliper itself. You have to take along this edge and just open it up a little bit so that square block will fit in. And then on the block itself, you have to first off turn the bolt around in it and you're wondering why are you going to all this trouble Jordan why don't you just buy a brake line well truth is I'm really really cheap I don't have a lot of extra money right now and these brake lines are in good shape so I'm gonna go ahead and use them for now and later on down the road I probably will upgrade to some stainless lines but not planning on going it road racing this year uh, hopefully drag racing, but not road racing. So the rubber lines will be just fine for street use. Okay, now we got our brake line prep for modification. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I put a little tape on here. It's not sticking very well. And uh, just to protect the line in case I nick it, the grinder. But I'm just going to grind that edge off. Hopefully you guys can see that where it keeps it from coming down flush. So I just got to get that low enough that it's less height than the washer that goes on here. And I'm going to be real careful not to nick up that... Uh, grooved area where the washer seats in. But now I'm just going to go ahead and grind that off. Alright. That'll 
vault up now to our new caliper. Take the tape off. And I'm going to grab my airline and just blow that out just in case there's any crap that got in there from grinding. But Okay, next thing we got to do is put our brake clips in. And these are what keeps the pads from rattling around. And they just kind of go in here. There's three of them. Uh, one on each side. And then one more that goes in the middle. And they're kind of a pain in the butt to put in. But uh, you want to make sure that you don't skip this step because uh, your brakes will make stupid noises and rattle. They'll probably work fine to stop it, but you paid all this money to do a big brake up kit. Brake upgrade, you better do it right. There we go, that's the two end ones in there. Bam. And uh, now this guy, which this guy goes the, the curve up. I'm trying to do this so you guys can see it, but uh, it's actually a lot easier to do it on the bench. Because they're little piece of crap clips that keep falling out of your hands and all that fun stuff. There we go. All right, all lined up. Clips are in. Perfect. Now, I'm going to go wipe my hands down before I handle these anymore. But these are our new power stop brake pads, ceramic brake pads. So hopefully these are good pads, who knows? But uh, I'm gonna give them a try. Bam, brake pads installed. Now we can put the rotor on and bolt up the caliper. Bam, brake rotor on. Okay, I'm gonna just take some uh, brake clean here and wash this sucker down because, well, we've been touching everything for one. And, uh, You don't want your greasy hands contaminating the brake pads, that's for sure. Okay, now we're going to take our freshly installed uh, brake pads and caliper and bolt that onto the bracket. And then to do that, you got to use the bolts that came in the kit. Bam, bam, caliper's on. All right, so now we can go ahead and we can put the brake line on. And uh, this brake line normally would have went on like this on the factory crown vic but on this setup it actually bolts on like this and it does so really really nicely so the brake line actually gives me a little bit more length and sits in a better place than it did before so i'm going to bolt that on using the factory crown victoria hardware like so ba -ba -ba bam done now we got the whole kit put together take our clip off the brake line and if we had 20 inch wheels, we could stop right there. Everything's done. But we don't have 20 inch wheels. We've got 19 inch wheels. And uh, because of that, I got to take the Corvette off the caliper because otherwise it rubs. So this is going away. I'm going to take the flap wheel and the grinder to that, blow out all the dust afterwards, and then I'll be good to bolt my wheel on. Okay, I've got my uh, one man brake bleeder hooked up here, even though I'm gonna use another man to help me out here. I got my son Josh in behind the wheel and he's just gonna pump the brakes for me. And we're gonna watch as the brake fluid travels up this line. And we're gonna watch for air bubbles and make sure that we don't have any. So you can see the air bubbles coming now. Okay, Josh, give her a pump. Here we go, and oh, another air bubble there. Yeah, keep pumping. And then push it to the floor and hold. Okay, that's just it. That's all there is to it. Tighten up that little bleeder again. And we're done. How's the brake seal, Josh? Pump them up. They feel solid? Yeah. Awesome. That's it. That right there is big brakes on a Crown Victoria front end. So for all you F100 guys or you guys that uh, have a Crown Victoria, you can do this too. As long as you've got wheels that'll clear it. Okay, we just got back from our shakedown run in the truck. Uh, the new brakes work awesome. You better be wearing your seatbelt when you pile on those because uh, you're stopping right now, especially with the sticky tires on it. So look at this thing though for... <laughs> 
that wheel is all brakes. It looks pretty awesome and it is a tight fit, like super tight fit. I thought the back was tight before that. Check this out. We still got lots and lots of brake in the back too and it's a pretty tight fit. But uh, it's more of these wheels than the brakes set up itself. Just these wheels don't seem to leave a lot of room for the calipers. But we clear front and back and that's good for me. So pretty happy now and uh, that's about it for this video. If you uh, if you like what you see in my videos, please uh, subscribe because I'm going to keep coming out with these more technical videos. Uh, I like showing the how-tos and all that. And while you're at it, check out uh, Kyle from Boosted Lifestyle. Uh, if you haven't found his channel already, he's got some pretty cool builds on the go. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys.